famous Lotus factory just outside the sleepy village of Hethel in Norfolk. In 1966, Colin Chapman, the company's charismatic founder, moved the works here from London, partly because he was looking for more space, but also because he realised there was a two and a half mile stretch of disused airfield going cheap. Alistair McQueen is Lotus's senior test driver and has been responsible for developing some of the finest driver's cars ever. Today he's here to talk us through three cars, the Esprit S4S, the Series 1 Elan and the Elan S2. This is the Series 1 Elan. Not the first ever Lotus, but certainly one of the best. In its day, it could outrun many a supercar down a twisty lane. And even now, 33 years after its birth, it's still a pretty spectacular drive. Well, it's nice to be reacquainted with the Series 1 Elan after many years. This particular car is over 25 years old. And first impressions are of its lightness and nimbleness. Very good ride. Nice to have a gear change which goes straight into the gearbox. The cornering capability, just as I remember, very precise, nice and linear, one steering input for the corner. The car maintains its line, no deviation at all. The cockpit feels quite small. But the driver very much feels part of the car. There's no feeling of floating around inside. I think even with the car this age, it would show up many more modern cars and its, its ride and handling characteristics, its steering, but also, most importantly, its pleasure in driving. This car, the new Elan, represented something of a hiccup for Lotus. Though it was as quick as anything point to point, its complex front-wheel drive chassis was expensive to make and not as much fun as its predecessor to drive. Even so, city types loved it, so much so that Lotus made this version, the S2. It differs from the Series 1 Milan in that it's transverse front-engine, front-wheel drive car. Immediately it feels a heavier car, more firmer ride, much quieter, both engine noise and exhaust note. It feels, from a steering point of view, very similar to the original Elan. Very precise, responsive, and dedicated in cornering, where the single steering wheel input generates a dedicated line from the car. The gear lever operation is very light but not so precise and with the same connection feeling that the uh, S1 Elan gives with its lever straight into the gearbox. Also, the car feels more spacious inside, a little bit more elbow room. It shows the same character, though, even though this car is some 25 years newer than the S1 Elan. It still retains this pleasure in driving, this integration of the driver with the car. The Esprit has been Lotus's mainstay since it was launched some 20 years ago. And one look at this S4S version, and you can see why. With an to 60 of comfortably under five seconds, the 285 horsepower S4S is one of the quickest cars on the road today. But what this Esprit is really about is its handling. It's an absolute dream to drive, here on the track or on the road. This is the latest development of this mid-engine rear-wheel drive car. It offers some significantly more performance than either of the Elans I've just driven. But it retains the qualities of the other two vehicles in terms of driver integration with the vehicle, the feeling of being in complete control of everything that's happening through the precision with which the car can be steered, turned into the corner, but with much higher grip levels and rates of acceleration.
So Lotus is in a pretty healthy state with cars like this under its belt. But what of the future? You'll have heard and read about the LSA, the car that Lotus claims will finally...